Welcome to Buffalo Game Day Recap. The Bills open the season with what I will call at minimum an inexcusable loss to the Jets. Um, It was probably ridiculous as well. Um, It was atrocious. Frankly, you know, I I left the field thinking, I don't know which team in blue had a worse loss in 48 hours in this stadium. I think it's probably still the Giants, but I I think it's debatable. So I'm Thad Brown along with A.J. Feldman tonight. We're going to, you know, break this loss down and talk about what it's going to mean um, long term. And AJ, you know, let me start with, with your initial reactions to this 22 to 16 defeat. Yeah, I think you use a lot of good words. I think on air, I used embarrassing and I kind of had to uh, put some caveats to that because embarrassing might be a little bit strong, but it's not too strong. This is a game that the Bills had to win once Aaron Rodgers left the game with an injury in the in the first quarter. We talked before about how there's going to be all these grandiose reactions to whatever happens to this game, you know, hot takes, things of that nature. This is a bad loss for the Bills. This is a divisional loss. This is a loss to Zach Wilson. This is a loss where they were in cruise control for much of this game, even though they weren't far ahead in the scoreboard, which turned out to be one of their downfalls. It really didn't feel like they were going to be burned by their mistakes. Josh Allen was doing crazy, stupid things. He was throwing interceptions he shouldn't have. He was fighting for one extra yard after he got a first down. We could have just hopped out of bounds. He was flying and twisting through the air. And then things just started falling apart. And it turned into a loss that is going to be very hurtful for them when it comes to standings, when it comes to the schedule. It's not a loss that they needed to have on their resume. And it could be costly down the stretch. We'll start with the bottom line here. This is a loss that a team that calls themselves a Super Bowl contender can't can't have. I mean, it, you know, now look, the Jets' defense remains really bleeping good. I mean, you know, they frustrated Josh Allen from the start. Um, you know, Stephon Diggs went for 100 yards, but it still seemed like he had to scratch and claw for a lot of it. I think a good chunk came on the drive that got led to the game-tying field goal at the end. And hey, good on Diggs for, you know, making plays there. But outside of Diggs, you know, there wasn't really anything spectacular this team did the rest of the way. And you're right. I, I thought the same thing. I even tweeted at halftime. The game was over the moment Rodgers got hurt. And it should have been. If the Bills are a Super Bowl contender, the game should have been over the moment you go to Zach Wilson. I mean, the Bills in this game lost to a Zach Wilson offense coached by Nate Hackett. <laughs> you can't get worse in the NFL, okay? And, and we'll get to all the different parts in a minute here. But but big picture if you're a Super Bowl contender, you can't you can't do this today, AJ. And I feel like we've said this about a loss or two every single game of the Bills the last three or four seasons. It's not a good thing when it happens in week number one because now you've got to go the next 16 games without. This is kind of maybe their mulligan game. You know, the Jaguars lost, the Steelers open, and things like that. You could screw up like once in a season. But now they've got 16 weeks to not have a – catastrophic loss etc etc because while the Jets are now less of a factor obviously with Aaron Rodgers out the AFC is a bloodbath and every loss is going to matter every game is going to matter the Dolphins looked like the greatest show on turf it it's it's bad it's bad that that, that's just all you can say yeah it's bad it's bad yeah you're right all right let's let's get into the, the parts of this first and we start obviously with Josh Allen four turnovers and and look Every turnover is not built the same. The first interception for Josh Allen in this game, I was totally fine with. It was one of the best punts you'll ever see. It was a 60-yard net, pin the Jets in the four-yard line. I mean, Sam Martin's over the sideline thinking, I can't do that. So that one was fine. After it, that... I still think it was a bad decision and a bad throw. It, it didn't... It The consequences were very minor, but there was no chance that pass was incompleted. And if he doesn't fall down after that interception, he could have taken it back much further. So yes, it didn't cost them, but I'm, I'm still not giving that a, a plus interception. No, no, no. There's no such thing as a, a, a plus interception. I, I think there's a, a less minus. No, it yeah, was, I'm not saying a plus, but I don't think. I'm, I'm looking at the play against third and eight. So if nothing's there, you know, then you're punting the ball anyway. And that punt turned out to be great, but I know what you're saying. I, I don't want to, I don't want to, you're right to point out that, you can't just totally excuse him because, oh, well, it ended up on the four. It was fine. You're right. After that, the second interception is a joke of an idea. That's a terrible decision. The third one, a bad decision, but more like within the scope of football. Like, I, I, can, I don't want to say I can live with it, but it seemed like the ball was late in a double coverage. That, that happens. You know what I mean? Your quarterback's trying to make a play. It's bad, but that happens. 
The second one, what the bleep are you doing? You know, you're in scoring range. It's second down. You can't throw that ball, you know? So, and then the, the last one, the fumble that, you know, gave the Jets the three that put them ahead for a little while, that was rookie Josh Allen stuff. You know, that this was, this was not a, a guy trying to make a play. This was a kid who was gripping too hard because he had made so many bad plays earlier. Now he's trying to make up for it. This is not what your veteran quarterback, who's supposed to be a leader, who's supposed to be a guy who's teaching, leading by example, you can't have him doing that. That's, you know, again, inexcusable is the word I'm going to land on. Again, that was inexcusable. His supporting hat cast didn't help him very much, but this Josh Allen took credit for the he blame. took blame for this loss. Yeah, the opposite of credit. It's a long night. Uh, <laughs> he took blame for this loss, and rightfully so. He he was not good. He was flustered. He made bad decisions. Like you said, it, it looked like rookie Josh Allen, Houston Texans playoff loss, Josh Allen. That's a and good spot for it. Yeah, it you know, it, it's it's a big thumbs down to Josh and and he's had too many of these in the past few years. Let's move on to the punt return. Um, I talked to a bunch of the guys who were on the field, Reggie Gilliam, Cam Lewis, Tyler Medikavich. The the general assessment is they felt they lost leverage. And, and you know, you can kind of understand what they mean by that because Xavier Gibson started going to the right on the punt and then kind of reverse field and went back to the left. And, you know, you watch football long enough. The moment you see a guy like that, I don't care who the coverage team, who the return man is, the moment a guy reverses field and gets the corner, then it's trouble. And that's kind of what happened. Sean McDermott talked about there weren't enough bodies around the ball, which probably makes a lot of sense. I don't think we're going to get a full assessment before you go back and look at the all 22 and say, okay, well, here's the guy that got out of his lane. But the, the one concern for this, and I brought this up to Sean McDermott, this was a problem in the preseason. Now, I know the personnel isn't all the same, but it wasn't. this isn't just a one-off for the Bills. This is something that, you know, was a concern as the preseason ended, and it bit them in this game, you know. And there are a few different bodies on there, but this has been generally a pretty positive, a pretty above-average coverage unit over the years. And as much as Josh Allen gave this game away, you know, not being able to make one tackle at the end of the game helped out too. Looking at some analysis on Twitter and things like that, the punt may have been the biggest uh, problem with that whole play. It was a trash punt. I agree. Yeah. Going in the middle of the field, you have all of your returners trying to go right. It ends up going left. Now everybody's, you know, trying to overcorrect things like that. And for, for a team that places so much emphasis on special teams in both players in the back end of their roster, you know, keeping a lot of special teams aces, you know, the back half of their rosters, like a lot of teams do a lot of special teams guys and other you know, roster decisions made as to who gets playing time, you know, Kair, Elam, DeMar Hamlin sitting out, them keeping all their special teams guys in. It's not a, it's not a, a third of the game, as they say, that the Bills should really be losing often. And it's a problem, and, and it costs them at the end here. Well, again, you want to win a Super Bowl, you got to win the, that third of the game, too, more often than you lose, and they lost it tonight. I mean, it's hard to sit here and break down punt coverage. Um, you know, but it's not like Tyree Hill ran that back. That's Xavier Gibson, I'm pretty sure, playing his first ever NFL game, who who won a game for the, the other team. So, um, you know, the, this is not going to be – like, Josh Allen was terrible and gave a game away. But, you know, he's going to make good plays. We're, we're pretty confident that guy's going to win some games later in the year. I'm much less confident with special teams right this second. I will just say one note as I'm looking at the box score. The Bills, we talked about how they would handle their kickoff returns – uh, you know, with Naheem Hines out, they did not take a single one back the entire game. Yeah. So they might be just forfeiting kickoff returns all season long. Well, I don't, I don't think the Jets did a good, the Jets ran a lot of them back and I don't think they got out past the 25 more often than not. So I will say that strategy was probably better, but you know, we're, in that decision, we're talking about two or three yards of possession as opposed to letting a touchdown run through you to end the game. Speaking of running through you, the Bills on defense, look, they only gave up 16 points. And it's Zach Wilson. They had a turnover. Um, you know, Jordan Poyer talked after the game about they didn't create enough turnovers. That, that's probably accurate. I, I will say I thought Zach Wilson played noticeably better. Now, with, with Zach Wilson, it almost can't not be better. But I, I thought he was actually, you know, uh, decent. I mean, am I stretching too far there? He made a couple good throws. Didn't, you know, there, there have been Zach Wilson games where he has one pick, and there are seven others where there are balls bouncing off defenders' face masks. That was not this game. All that said, you know, the Bills had defensive plays that cost them in this game. And, you know, Brees Hall, I know he was great last year, but this was game one off an ACL. It took the entire season last year for Trey White to even get close to good. 
Brees Hall touched the ball three times and changed his game, led the two scorers in the first two and a half quarters of this game. And, and Jordan Poyer on the first one. Look, we got to start talking about Jordan Poyer in the open field. You know, this is now, I think, an official problem because he looked bad in the preseason against Jalen Warren. He looked bad in, in the uh, scrimmage against um, James Cook or the, you know, return of the blue and red. Him trying to make tackles on elite players or even Jalen Warren level players is something that I don't think you can sit here and say you have confidence in. And, you know, is it he's 30 or whatever? Is it something that maybe, look, maybe it's Terrell Bernard and there's some communication thing going on. But I thought on that play, he looks like now, at least you have to talk about him as a liability as the last line of defense on a tackle. Yeah, it, it was not a good look for for Jordan Poyer trying to make that uh, tackle in open field on the Brees Hall run. Trey White, uh, our Carl Jones identified him, as, as as most people did, as as the main culprit for that run. But yeah, once it got to that second level, Jordan Poyer, I, I'm watching it back right now. Uh, punter, you know, him and Sam Martin – kind of had the same tackle attempt <laughs> from the wow. punter turn. I mean, look, that that's the worst thing you could say about Jordan Poyer. You just compared him to the punter, you know? And look, I'm not saying you're wrong. You're wrong. But I'm not I, I know where you're I know where you're going with that. It, it it is harsh and it's it's not accurate. But you know it's it's him back on his feet getting spun around and then flailing over and not giving even a hand on Brees Hall. So it's not a good look for Jordan Poyer, that's for sure. And, and and to your point on Zach Wilson, he did look better. Obviously, he did have the one interception to Matt Milano, which was was pretty atrocious. But other than that, he, you know, no interceptions, 14 for 21 total. And the fact that this was a game that he was not expecting to play in at all, there was not a, a you know, a playbook designed for him. He was thrown in off the gun, off a, off a good Bills defense, who I thought did a lot of good things. The, the front four uh, got a lot of pressure without Von Miller, which was a problem last year, sacked him twice. You know, uh, Leonard Floyd looked good. Greg Rousseau looked good. So I think there are some pluses from the Bills defense, but still some of those things that have, have reared their ugly horn in the past, the long run. Uh, it looked, you know, like that Damian Harris run from uh, from last year, two years ago. Just you, you'd like to get more than one interception on Zach Wilson. You know, I just watched the run again. And, and you know, obviously Carl played Division One football and, and, his uh, knowledge is respected above all else in our department. I don't know if, I mean, yeah, Trey White missed the play, but that to me looked like an elite running back making a move that a guy wasn't prepared for. You know, it's the kind of thing where, yeah, was it a C minus play by the defensive back? Sure. But that's that Brees Hall might be an A plus running back and he's not even fully healthy. And to me, that looked like a, an A minus A kind of move. So, you know, I, I think, look, I guess the point I'm making is I think Trey White might get beat on those sometimes. You cannot have your safety because Trey White gets beat and it goes from a two-yard run to a 13-yard run. Jordan Poyer gets beat and it goes from a 13-yard run to an 80-yard run. And and not to say that Jordan Poyer's play was worse, but that's where the bigger concern is for me. And we do have to give Christian Benford some credit. Running back, uh, saving oh, yeah, the play absolutely. on a tackle. Uh, absolutely. Playing the entire game, Dane Jackson, I don't think, came in at all. If 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 he did, very sparingly. Uh, played well against Zach Wilson. Made made the hustle play to to save the game and which which ended up ending up sending into overtime. Yeah, and I, I thought the secondary, you know, as much as we're, we're talking about Jordan Poyer as a tackler here, I thought the secondary in general played pretty well because it seemed like both quarterbacks had trouble finding any open receivers. I mean, even the stuff that Zach Wilson completed and how many completions did he have? I got the box score up. I mean, Zach Wilson had fourteen completions. You know, two of those were ridiculous plays to, to Garrett Wilson off the top of my head. He also had a, you know, a borderline ridiculous dump off to Alan Lazard, you know, so it wasn't like even those 14 plays were, you know, step back and, you know, find guys wide open. Um, so I think the secondary in general did play pretty well. And, and I, I think you're right. I think there is reason to be optimistic about this defense. On the offensive side of the ball, the offensive line didn't look good. Granted it is a really strong Jets front four, front seven. Allen sacked five times, didn't look comfortable throughout the game. We knew it was, you know, it didn't look good in that Steelers preseason game. You don't want to put too much stock in the preseason, but it kind of looked the same. Allen was flustered. Allen eventually started to kind of create uh, problems for himself. Uh, Warren Sharp tweeted out uh, a stat, which I'm going to pull up right now. Uh, he was pressured on only 26% of his dropbacks. That was the 10th lowest of any quarterbacks this week this in the week? NFL. Okay. He took nine hits, which was the third most, five sacks, which was the fifth most. 
And he was sacked on 11% of his dropbacks, which are the fifth most. So the Jets got a lot of bang for that buck. Either that is A, them capitalizing on all of the chances that they had, or B, Allen not comfortable behind that offensive line. Ken Dorsey not giving him the tools to be comfortable. So a point of concern going forward as, uh, as we kind of knew going into this season. So this is where you're going to help me out as someone who, who's watching the broadcast while I'm on the field. To me on the field, it didn't feel like there were overt losses. It wasn't like expert Lawrence Taylor blowing around a tackle. It felt messy. It felt like it was just a collapse. It wasn't, you know, again, it was like Quinn Williams. Um, I don't know. Did he really do anything in this game? I mean, it didn't feel like he was that dominant. And, and you know, maybe we'll speak to um, a quality game, you know, five, five tackles, one for a loss for uh, Williams. Maybe Osiris Torrance played okay if we want to start, you know, singling out individual linemen. But it just, it felt messy. It felt like it could have been cleaned up, you know, not because the, the Jets just out-talented the Bills. It just, it felt sloppy and, and something that could have been addressed better, whether it's the quarterback, you know, being a little more calm, a little more under control, having his feet underneath him, or, or maybe just a little bit more help up front. But give me your read from watching all the replays in the broadcast copy. Yeah, I would I would say that it did kind of feel like a team effort as a whole. You know, Spencer Brown is going to get a lot of attention because of his track record in the past. He, he was getting some criticism. But I think you just have – there wasn't one player who really struggled that much. I think just as a whole, the offensive line just couldn't contain the front four. It was – you know, the pocket was collapsing quicker. There were there were plays where, where Josh looked uncomfortable. So – you know, I think I think if you grade it as a, I think it's more accurate to grade it as a unit, giving a thumbs down than maybe any particular player or player or things of that nature. Josh getting nervous about the pass rush was a problem end of last year. It was a big problem in the Bengals game. You could see it creeping up. Even that stupid Bears game, which wasn't even a game in the cold, there were instances where it seemed like Josh was seeing seeing ghosts as much as I hate to, to put that phrase out there. You know, with with the pass rush and that you know, may have been something else. Obviously the bears is, is what are you looking at? The jets, you can understand this is a defense that's good enough to create, you know, questions for a lot of quarterbacks, but it, it was a concern in the last year. And, and from what you're saying, it seems like it's a concern um, in this game as well. Let's take a look at, let's go to the big picture now, you know, about what this means. The, the bills talk a lot after the game about it's only one game and we have a lot of, of season left and they're right. But man, you look at what this game might mean. Especially you brought up, I, I don't know if this was during the podcast or before here, you brought up the Dolphins as a team that looked like a juggernaut. There's a good chance the Bills and the Dolphins are racing neck and neck end of the year. And the Bills tonight had a road division win in their hands and let it slip away. What that means for tiebreakers, you know, if, if the Bills and Dolphins are both 11 and 6, this could easily be the reason the Bills have to play three games on the road to go to the Super Bowl instead of at least one home game, if not more. You know, so yeah, it was one game, but boy, you have no idea what you gave up. And then look, look at the other side too. The Bills, if they finish this, are the Jets are not a factor. You're already a game ahead of the Bengals and Chiefs. You know, all you gotta do is worry about Miami for the moment, at least. But instead, now you're you're looking up at the Dolphins and you've missed an opportunity to gain ground on the two teams that are probably going to be the elite teams. You know, for for one game, and, and really we need to say it's only one game. It's still right to say. But for one game, this could turn out to be a disaster. And I think some of the other big picture things you need to look about is kind of what we were saying after that Steelers preseason game. The issues today were the issues that we expected, were the issues that we had last season. Josh Allen, bad turnovers, dumb turnovers. The secondary receivers, Stephon Diggs had a great game, 10 receptions, 102 yards, a touchdown. Gabe Davis had two receptions for 32 yards. None of the other receivers, tight ends, running backs, had more than 26 yards. That was Dalton Kincaid, four for 26, who did fine in his first game. He he had a, a brief little spurt of, of, of nice, nice things, but nothing crazy. The running game didn't do a lot. The defense, you know, fell apart at key moments. The rush defense, special teams. So the, the offensive line, as, as we talked about before. So the issues that we expected are the issues that we have now. And now you kind of look at the schedule where they get, they better turn this around quick because they are in the quote unquote easy part of this schedule. They've got, you know, the Raiders, the commanders, that dolphins game, which is going to be big. And then, you know, Jacksonville, New York, new England. So you've got those first seven weeks 
they really have to write this ship quickly because that is the time where they need to make up ground and prepare themselves for the teams that they have later in the schedule. So, you know, these next two games, they're not must win. It's, it's only two or three weeks into the season, but you're going to feel a whole lot better than you with yourselves at two and one going into that dolphins games. than you are at one and two or God forbid, zero and three. If they're one and two, um, the, I don't want to say panic button, but we're close, you know, and then let me, let me, kind of sum up your point and tell me if I'm wrong about this. The Bills in this game were who we thought they were. Mm-hmm. And more to the point, they were who they were last year. And that team last year was not good enough, not to win a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to be a playoff team. But, you know, they lost a three-point or a, a one-possession game to Zach Wilson on the road last year. And and the Jets turned out to be a 7-10 and 10 team, and they're probably on that road again without Aaron Wilson this year. The Bills are the same team. Dalton Kincaid and James Cook as a regular running back didn't make a difference. Um, Leonard Floyd has, and he was really good today. Didn't make a difference. This is still the same team that got hammered by the Bengals end of last year. Now look, Von Miller comes back and make a difference, but you, you, you people with a lot of Bills fans who spent the whole off season saying, "Oh, they're definitely better. They're, they got to be better on paper." In this game, they were not. Yeah, they. Everybody was chalking up every minor move as a, a supreme uptick in the right direction. Oh, James Cook, he'll be better. Uh, the the third receivers, the secondary receivers, they'll be better. We got different guys. We got different guys on the offensive line. We got different guys on the defense, different guys. Well, different doesn't always mean better. And today it didn't. Different was the same. Yeah. All right, man. Um, that's going to wrap it up. I think for, for Buffalo game day recap, uh, not, not the discussion I thought we were having. And, and, you know, I was the guy that tweeted at halftime. This game was over. Um, I have a habit of doing that. I apologize to Bill's Mafia. That's that's a bad habit. I got to stop it. But you you're know, always the, so overconfident in the Bills. You're, the, you're yeah, just, I know. just the biggest Bills homer out there. That That's definitely me. That's me to a T right there. That's why my name starts with T. Yes, that was terrible. Let's <laughs> cut that from the podcast. No, we can't. All right, we're done tonight. It's late. Um, yes, well, one of 17. Um, but, boy, this is one we're going to be talking about for a long time. For AJ Feldman, I'm Thad Brown. Thanks for listening and watching the Buffalo Game Day Recap. You'll find this every single week at rochesterfirst.com and wherever you get your podcasts.